nighttime in the shop. We got a cool little project we're gonna do on Lucille, our 12 valve Cummins Ram 3500. If you didn't see the last video introducing it, go ahead and check that out. I'm getting all the stuff done to it that I need to in order to properly drive it safely. And that includes at night. So these headlights have to go. Stock lights, never good, dismal. When I say dismal, like on low beams, I think the marker lights, the side marker lights are just as bright. It is bad. So uh, in my experience, the best thing you can do is switch to an HID. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that say LEDs are good now, but I'm still a firm believer that a cheap set of HIDs is way more effective uh, than going to LEDs. And part of that, that switch over, you have to get rid of these refracting, I don't know what you want to call them, uh, lenses. So we're going to do that. We've got a box here with our HID kit and we got a box here with new lenses. Brand new, brand spanking new. These are gonna just light this truck up. Like that, light this truck up. It's gonna make it sparkle. So let's go ahead, get these on this truck and see what we're working with. Beforehand, I'm gonna go ahead, just turn on these dismal headlights so you can see what I'm talking about and just how poorly they light. So we'll turn lights on. This is with the high beams. Let me put the high, take the high beams off. Ugh. Brother, ew. What's that, brother? Yellow, dingy. I mean, they're there, but it's not much. I can tell you, you can't even see the light on the wall. I had the lights on in the shop, I know, but you can't even see like a difference in lighting when I turn the lights on. These are headlights. These are, you're supposed to be able to drive at night with these. No way. All right, so there you go. There's the first, look at the corner lights. I swear they're, they're brighter than the, than the headlights. I'm looking directly at it. Look, the camera doesn't even like change the exposure. Okay, let's go ahead, get the other ones on. That's gonna be a lot better. Side done. Man, look at the difference. Ew. Ah. Man, that is something. Let's get this side done and then we'll see what they look like on. Because that is a huge difference. Number two is on. Moment of truth. Let's see if everything works. Pretty easy connections, so I don't see why it shouldn't. Here we go. We got one light. We got two light. There we go. We'll give them a minute to warm up. HIDs take about, I don't know, 35, 40 seconds to start getting really bright. But man, I'll tell you, when they fire off, there's nothing like them. Look, you can already see. Look at the light already against the wall over there. I mean, it's a massive, massive difference. You can see the exposure on the camera changing. See that? That's a surefire sign that the lights are bright. See that? That's the exposure. It wasn't doing that at all with the stock lights. So that's a huge difference you can see. Yeah, big difference. Oh man, we'll take it out for a little ride and make sure, we gotta get them, make sure they're pointed right and everything, but it looked pretty close, a little bit low on one side. So I'll straighten them up and then take her for a ride and see. But whew, way better and completely change the look of the truck. Love it.
So another thing we noticed here, that is dumb. So we're gonna plug that tire real quick. These tires are kind of wearing on even too. I'm gonna have Heath do an alignment on this thing. Might have to get a set of new fronts because it's wearing pretty bad on the outside. I didn't do any of that wear clearly, but I just got the truck, so I'm gonna fix everything. Anyway, first thing we gotta do is plug that tire. So let's go ahead, got these handy dandy little screw in plugs. We're gonna throw one of those in and then we're gonna use the Ettenwolf inflator. Pretty cool little unit right here. We'll see, we're gonna check all the tire pressures on all four tires with this bad boy. This is really simple to use. All you have to do is just hook it up, start to turn it on, it shows you your pressure, 45. We're gonna select what mode we want. We want a truck, right? And we wanna turn that up to, let's do about 55. Right there, then you hit start. It does the rest for you. Really handy if you're out in the field, you don't need to drag a compressor hose all the way out to where you are. So we'll let that one fill up and then we'll go to the rest of them and make sure they're all done too. Well, I told you we were going to do it. Here it is. Governor Springs, guys. We've got Lucille ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and pull out the stock Governor Springs and we're gonna put in these two bad boys on each side. You got this extra one for 4,000, but we're only gonna do 3,000 because we're using stock valve springs and we don't want to float. So we're gonna put these in on either side with the seat to go with it like so. And we're gonna leave those two out. So there you go. So let's go ahead and get those in. This is effectively gonna raise our defueling point from 2400 RPM, 2500 RPM, all the way to 3000 RPM. Right now as it sits, the truck is done 26, 27. It won't even rev past that if you hold your foot to the floor. So with these, hopefully we'll, we'll get a little over 3000. I think 3200 would be safe. And uh, that'll just give us that much more power band. We're talking about a 10% or more, 15% uh, increase in the power band. So that'll give us a lot more speed in each gear. And it'll just make it easier to drive, especially towing. And that's what I'm doing with this thing. So let's go ahead and get those stock ones out and these in and see what she does. There's our stock Governor Springs first set with the witness mark on them. So we know they're original. The safety wire was still on it as well. So let's go ahead and pull those out. All right, here's our stock springs right here. As you can see, there's four total. This is your idle spring. You're gonna leave this one in there. I just took it out so you can see that there's actually four springs all stacked inside of each other from the factory. And we're gonna be going to just these two springs or I'm sorry, three springs. So we're gonna change out the middle three for these two, and that's gonna give us our 3,000 RPM. This middle, this little extra one is a 4,000. We're not gonna be using that. So let's go ahead, get this back together, and do the same thing for the other set of springs that are 180 degrees away from it. Put it back on, see what it does. All right, we got the springs in, and uh, it's warming her up a little bit doesn't get too warm on the drive that I'm gonna do but uh, hot enough to burn some diesel so initially started up perfectly fine uh, revs nice doesn't feel weird or anything I would I would say it, it feels a tiny bit more responsive which could be good or could be bad um, but for me it doesn't matter I'm, I'm used to responsive stuff so just keep that in mind. It is gonna change the way the pedal feels. It doesn't feel stock. The stock was real sluggish. That could have been un unnatural to begin with. I don't know, I've never had one of these before. 
it felt to me like it was a little spongy, the throttle, you know, you had to really kind of lay into it before you saw too much action. While now it's kind of, mm, that first quarter inch to a half an inch of throttle does a lot more. So we'll get up here onto the paved road and then we'll just see what the, uh, what the RPM band looks like. Before, like I said, it was started defueling around 2400. So just after 2200 or so, it would start to wane off and it was done by 26 2700 it was not going any higher than that so i think that those stock springs were probably worn out or old at least so let's go ahead and see what these 3k springs do and uh i'm excited i'm excited all right so let's drop down to second gear Second gear usually lasted no time at all. So let's go ahead and see what we get now for uh, RPM. Whoa, yeah. That is way better. Oh, we blew a, <laughs> we blew a coupling off. No boost. <laughs> so that's pretty strong, as you can see. Way better, awesome. I'll get that coupling fixed and uh, we'll get back out here. Wow, way, going right past 3K though, huh? Cool. Okay, so we didn't blow off a coupling, we blew off the boost line, which was hooked up to the AFC, so that's a good kind of a safety. The, uh, when the AFC blows a line off, it defuels. So you just lose all your power. So that was cool, easy, just stuck the hose back in. I gotta put some zip ties, you know, running 35 plus pounds of boost is definitely gonna do that. So let's get back home and uh, follow up. All right, we made it back, no problems at all. This truck dialed, working perfect. So the verdict is in, the Governor Springs on this truck are working great uh full disclosure they were just some amazon springs for 17 bucks i didn't go crazy and buy like the 200 dollars ones from any of the big diesel shops because i didn't see a reason why plain and simple so you could do the same thing 17 bucks not bad that's a cheap mod and you can see we unlocked uh, an extra 400 plus rpm 500 rpm easily before we were having trouble getting over that 2500 rpm hump it was literally on its face by 23 to 2400 and going down as it reached 26 2700 max would not go any faster now we're pulling clear to past 3000 as you saw like 3100 3200 uh power starts to wane off at 3000 that's exactly what we expected so i'm happy with that that just unlocked a whole different gear for being able to tow which is what this truck's main purpose is, and uh, and a little performance if you if you're that if you're looking for that out of out of one of these tow rigs. So obviously never going to be a fast truck because it's so big, but it's still fun, and with the headlights and everything, it's working great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little upgrade path that we just did here today on the video, and uh, who knows what's next? We'll see. Either way, see you in the next one.